Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about coding, scripting. Uh, we talked about it in the previous episode, but we didn't explain much about it. I have a simple project with two cubes, and I have a script attached to this cube. We're going to talk about this later, but first, let me tell you about the script types. Okay, so basically in Lua, if you right-click and do create, and then there's Lua. So right now, there are five different types. So client, server, client and server, module, and UI. So what is a client script? This is for the stuff that happens on your computer, especially when you're playing online or multiplayer game. Meaning, for example, let's say this cube is a player. Let's give it a name, player2, and this is player1. Now each one of those players has a client. Now when a player moves, this will not be showing on the other player's client. It's because it's handling its own client. And that's when we use the server. But first, we understand that the client handles tasks like player input, character movement, and any client side effect. Does that make sense? That being said, let's start working with the client. Now that you understand the script types, you must understand the life cycle. This might be a little bit confusing at first, but we will try, I'll try to explain it as clear as possible. So every script has a life cycle and the life cycle can have different functions. Now the most common function that we're going to be using the awake, the start, the update, the late update, the fixed update. Now, speaking of the awake function, this one is called when the script is first loaded, and it's also called even if the script is disabled, and it will only be called once. Same goes for the start. And it should be called before all start methods, or not should be, it will be called before all the start methods. As for the start, the start is called when the script is first enabled. So whenever you enable a new script, this function will be called. And this will only be called once, like the awake, and it's also called before all the update methods. Here we have a bunch of different updates for the game logic, and this will be called before all of them. The update is called every frame, used for regular updates such as physics, calculation, or input handling, and and so on because this will keep updating over and over and over again. Now the late update is interesting because this will also be called every frame but after all the update functions have been called. Now the fixed update, this will be called at, at a fixed interval. It's like independent of frame rate and it's also used for physics update and other time dependent actions. We'll go through this together later on in the video. As for the on disable, destroy, and on application quit, I haven't explained those yet, or I might not explain those in the video. There's also on collision, and there's also on enable. Let's first focus on awake, start, fixed update, update, and late update. Now, if you go to Unity, and here we have a cube. Now, this cube, I gave this cube a color, which is the yellow color, like you see here, it's material. And I also gave it a script, which is type client, and I attached it to the box or the cube. If you don't know how to attach a script to the cube, please go and watch the other episode that I created earlier. Oh, just so you know, a quick note that this object or this cube is not static. It means I can move it left and right. Right now I can move it, but this will also make me able to move it in the game when I'm when I'm playing. So first we start by adding the awake function. This function will run when the script is loaded and then we set the starting position for the object to zero and inside the awake function we get the current position of the object using self okay, component transform and the position of the transform and then we declare a variable for the object mesh render this will be we will be using it later in the code to change the color of the material and then we get the object mesh render from a uh, mesh render component and we assign it to the mesh render for the object that we declared earlier so what we are doing here is basically declaring variables for the position and the mesh render and we are also creating a function when the script is loading and then we are getting the component which is the transform component and if you go back here, if you click here, you can see here that so there's a component called transform and that's what we are getting. And when we get the transform, we're getting the position from that component itself. And right here, we have a mesh render as well. If I go back to Unity and I scroll down, you can see here there is mesh render and that mesh render has material. And this material is assigned to the cube, which is right here. And if I scroll down, you're going to see that this cube has a color, which we'll be using later in our code. So right now, let's declare a variable for the 
the initial color, which uh, which we'll be using later in the start function to show you the difference between the awake and the start. And now we write the start function that runs at the start of the script. And now we check if the initial color is nil. We assign the color for the uh, variable that we declared earlier, and this color will be red. Now, by the way, you should know that the color is between zero and one and not 255. If you check the documentation, you'll know what I'm talking about. And then we set the transparency for the color to one and then we apply that color to the material that we have so using mesh render the material the color equal the color that we just assigned what this basically do is first we get when the script first loads we get the components which is the transform and the mesh render and we assign them to the variable that we created earlier and then when the script starts we check if the initial color is nil we assign a new color to that variable that we declared earlier which is this one right here and the color is going to be red we also use initial color dot a to adjust the transparency because right now the color that new doesn't take an transparency parameter which is rgba and for, for that we're going to be using rgba RGB and then we're assigning it manually and then we change the material color using mesh render the material color and now we initialize variable for tracking time which is the current time it's going to be zero and the timer max which means every two seconds we are gonna uh, listen to the update function that runs every frame and now we're gonna check if the current time is more than or equal to the max time which means that if the current time right now is zero but if it goes above two or if it's two then we are going to create a new color which is going to be a random color between zero and 255 and then we set the transparency to one, the same as we did before. And then we apply that color to the material or to the mesh render that we defined earlier. And then we reset the timer to zero since we finished applying the color. And then if the current time is not greater than the or equal to the max time, we simply add time to the current time, meaning the current time right now is going to be equal to current time plus time to tell the time that will basically increase the time. So now let's listen to the fixed update. The fixed update function like I said runs at a fixed interval for physics updates but since it's physics update and we are basically changing material color for now we're gonna just print the fixed update and the time starts since and then we round it to the nearest whole number which is gonna be math or floor time dot time and we used a string here just because we can't log the numbers and or the tables or anything that's not string so we convert them to string and then we log it by doing to string now we listen to the latest update which is the last function that we are gonna listen to this function runs after all the other updates that has been processed meaning that the update is done and the fixed update is done now we listen to the late update now in the late update we are going to update the objects objects position based on the sign of the current time uh, but the object should stop moving when all the other updates are done to change the object position basically solve the transform position we're changing its transform and then vector 3 dot new and then math.sign and time.time .time, which means that the object is going to be updated based on the current time and then the position.y and position.z are going to be static and going to be changing because if you scroll up right here and you see that we declared a variable or the starting position should always be zero which we are basically overriding in the late update function right now if we do control s and save the script and go back to unity and we start the game you can see here that the object is moving because basically changing its transform position every late update and it's also printing that the fixed update the times time since start it's repeatedly printing when did it start and it's also changing its color every two seconds but if i go here to high rise and then to studio and virtual player and we spawn another player and we bring it right here you can see that it's not the same color and this is because and it even it's, it's also not in the same position and that's because the new client we spawned a new client and this is not being handled on the server so like i said each one has their own client and if we spawn another player you will also notice that this player has a different color if i switch between them you can see here that everyone has a different color and this is happening because we don't have a game logic that changes the color for all of the clients at the same time if that makes sense
And that's it. I hope I covered all the script types and you know the difference between the client and the server side script and what is the life cycle of Unity. I mean, it's pretty basic. It's straightforward. And if you guys have any question, please let me know in the comments. If you have any feedback, please also let me know. And I will see you in the next video. Stay safe and take care.